So, yes, uh, I'll have just two slides, basically. One slide is uh, to take together the journey we have had so far to understand where we are and perhaps to reflect back to see if there are any like service design elements there or lean startup elements or whatever. I'm not going to pinpoint them out, so if you find yourself uh, anything similar you have heard so far, then it's great and I'm happy. Uh, my main role has been uh, just one thing, basically, to understand who is our client, who is e residency client. And I've tried to do that for the last six months, and most probably I will do it next two years, as long as I'm in this project, just to understand who is our client. And I'll try to give you the best understanding so far after six months of work, uh, who it can be. And then I'll introduce you also three personas. Uh, out of five case studies, five personas, three today are actually here. And uh, so if you listen carefully, then uh, it's easier for you later to fill some things, some frameworks you have on paper. So, who is your resident? I think seem a little bit covered it. I don't need to go there anymore, especially if we are all here, mostly Estonians, and uh, yesterday we had also a brief session. This is timeline, my first slide. It shows the last six months where I started to be involved in this project and uh, gives over a little perspective. The work, of course, started a bit before uh, and the idea of e-residency is like, I don't know, I tried to trace it back, it's more like 10 years old. This idea, let's give this ID card to some foreigners. So uh, the idea itself, nothing too new. But how I would see it, uh, this thing actually started, this project is from 1st of December, September, where um, Tavi Kotka, Siimsikut and Rutanus won this idea competition from by Arango Fund. And I started to work as a full-time uh, first employee back then and, uh, and quit my other job that I had at that point of time. So first thing, uh, what I tried to do, like I said, to try to understand who is e-residency form, uh, why one would like this kind of thing, and uh, made a launch page uh, where you can early subscribe yourself as an e-resident. And uh, by 1st of October, it was launched, and then we thought that uh, let's start, like, asking people to join here and the uh, first 20 hours gave us over 5,000 or 4,000 early subscribers from 150 different countries. So and this was quite uh, amazing um, and then we actually realized that uh, this can be quite awesome thing, this e-residency and uh, there is some need behind this. We didn't understand what it is but someone at least wants it because it got somehow that attention. And they investigated further and understood that uh, I asked personally emailed to 1,000 early subscribers, 9,000, and uh, got 1,000 replies, which I took one week off and read all those 1,000 replies to understand who e resident can be. And 60% of them uh, wanted e residents for business purposes, 35% wanted it something, some, for something else which they didn't know exactly, but something something else. We had some information and we went further. Uh, next important milestone, 1st of November, around that area, when the Estonian Parliament approved the legislation that we can actually go on with this. Uh, 80 out of 101 uh, persons out of this uh, the, uh, parliament voted positively and no one rejected, so it was quite amazing. Very important milestone was 1st of December, uh, first year resident go live with Edward Lucas from UK. Uh, this was like huge marketing bus then, and the marketing bus got so famous that uh, that actually it got thousands of tweets all around the world, uh, hundreds of articles from the top top papers and uh, everybody started to define their own EU residency, what it is and what it is not. And when we went to US with Prime Minister delegation to uh, to promote it and to 
say, uh, tell what it is in the world and we discard that uh, the world knew better what irritants is. Wherever I went, whether I was in bus, train, restaurant, bar, when I said I'm from Estonia, then uh, US citizens started explaining to me what the residence is and uh, how Estonia is losing its borders and how everybody now will see how new government is functioning and and totally crazy things what exactly opposite of what we thought the residence is and uh, that was quite quite amazing feeling to be there this is Times Square uh, marketing of e Estonia When we came back, uh, Prime Minister Rivas uh, gave us a mandate to actually try it out. To try it out and see whether we can fail or succeed or what is it. Because we saw that there, is, there needs to be, we need to use that single opportunity that we were given at the moment. I was elected then as a team leader. I'm happy for that. And uh, 1st of April, we have a team of seven people who are going to work together. Some of the people are in this room uh, at Enterprise Estonia. And uh, I'm happy to say one of those people uh, is also a service designer. So very important in our team. And uh, we have one and a half years to try it out to see whether we fail or succeed. And uh, if you fail, then uh, let's close it and uh, we'll do something else. Another important milestone, it's one thing perhaps for later work also to remember is that we know that today's process how you can get the residency is not so convenient and we're going to change that and uh, most probably by 1st of May we have launched new system so that basically you can apply e-residence online everywhere and you can choose your pick-up location from 38 different embassies, foreign embassies and you can take your card and pick it up from there. And uh, you need to meet only once, give your fingertips, and you'll get the card. So then it helps us to scale, helps us to understand better who our customers are and what they desire. The purpose is that by 2017, our team has made a product which is ready to scale. There are thousands of use cases of e-residency, but our, we need to like really concentrate on something, something which is the most valuable, which is scalable, which is automate digitally, and uh, and everything has been enabled. Laws, uh, laws are supporting for us, we have the services, and that's why I'm very happy that I was invited here, because this service design thinking here is most crucial, because e-residency involves all of our core services that we have in Estonia. And at the moment, as perhaps you can see later, e-residents can't handle it, because they are in silos, they are indifferent, and, uh, and it's not working out like that. And yes, the purpose is then uh, that in 10 years' time we have 10 million e Estonians. And uh, in my previous team, which I had, um, I had also one startup before, uh, I like to put like very high uh, aims also, because uh, it, helped, it helped me to understand that we can't carry on like this, like today. We can't get 10 million like this. We need to change totally something. We need to create something new. So. Uh, and this puts us to thinking, how come 10 million? Then? And I'll try to get this picture now. There is a world map, and there are five different use cases, uh, which so far I have the best understanding of what the EU residency can be for, who can benefit out of this. First category, and three of those categories will be later examined, then, is uh, for visitors of Estonia. This can be Erasmus students, diplomats, foreign mem uh, family members. Uh, they can be tourists. And uh, the problem is that as Estonian life is digitalizing day by day, then we sometimes forget that if you don't have these cards, these ID cards or DJID, then it's quite impossible to do anything in Estonia while you'll be here. And for example, to access some libraries, to get some uh, discounts via, by loyalty cards, uh, do customs declarations, to do mobile contracts, all the things that you need actually do in Estonia physically being here, it's difficult to do. And this is fairly simple in that sense, that we just give those cards and make, make them accessible and it's fine. 
other persona is uh, a guy who wants to invest in, in Estonia. Let's call it investment country. Uh, usually they are from neighboring countries. They want to export their existing business to Estonia. And their problems are that currently everything they need to do, for example, I don't know, Jorma just mentioned changing email address. They need to go to notaries and translate documents and DHL to Estonia to just change one email address and company register. So all those activities are a huge hassle and sometimes they need to hire a middle manager to do it for them. So basically they need to give the trust level to someone else. Solutions here are digital signature of course and access to tax declarations, e-banking and all that things that the Estonian current businesses are practicing today. Again, nothing so greatly new just giving access, making it more easier, already today benefits those. And we can see that today 60% of, of e-residents, we have around 1,000 e-residents today, are from Finland and from Latvia. So their existing companies' uh, branches are in Estonia and uh, they have better life for that. Fine. Can't get 10 million. This doesn't bring us 10 million. This can bring us a few thousand more companies in Estonia because it's easier life. This is what brings us 10 million. We are creating a virtual business environment. Environment where it's meant for basically whether you're a startup or you're a freelancer. You're very small. Most probably you are from Asian countries where, or developing world where the pain level in your current existing regime is hassle, is pain. There are mainly three problems with these guys. First problem with them is that they are not trusted in EU and Western world. They can't do business because other businesses don't trust. That's fairly simple. Second problem is that uh, they don't have access to online payment systems. So if you want to build a startup or a freelancer, you need to have PayPal or Stripe or some accounts where you can actually get money internationally. People can pay for your services on the internet and you can take the money out. You don't have access if you're in the developing world. And third problem is that even if you have access for some reasons, the inside hassle of actually managing your company inside your country is, is so high pain level that eventually just don't do it. If it takes like, I don't know, sometimes one guy said it take, took 12 months to actually see that the company name is free or it's taken. And then you can start doing business. So, just killer. Solution is that whilst, whilst you're e-resident, first click, you'll establish a company. Second click, you establish a bank account. And third click, you get PayPal or Stripe account and you can do international business. And on background, we automate all the accountancy systems and digitalize so that you don't ever need to come to Estonia and you even don't need to declare taxes monthly basis because we do it for you. This is doable. We need to change many laws for that. We need to change uh, many services. Uh, but on a daily basis, when I speak with end users in Asia, it's been spoken to Malaysians, Indonesians, Ukraine people. Sometimes they start to cry on Skype. Like, really. They are bringing their family together because, because that's something that they have tried to do all their lives when they are like younger and they haven't that chance that they just read from news how startups are growing all the time. And now suddenly they see that there is one country which actually can help them to do that. What is here important is uh, to see the stakeholders, how everybody can benefit out of this. Uh, Malaysian or Ukraine person, uh, later we have one persona from Ukraine, can do entrepreneurship, fine, clear. What benefits get Malaysia country as judge is that uh, if we are as transparent as possible, then we actually can tell Malaysia country of who is the entrepreneurs from their countries and how much they need to pay taxes to Malaysia government. We can do that cooperation and Malaysia itself then wants that all its citizens would start to become Estonian e-residents. What benefits Estonia gets out of this? Besides new private sector startups and besides marketing 
And besides the tax money which comes through private sector, let's, let's say banking, uh, we can actually start monetizing. Once we have all the world with us, as e-residents and platform users, we can make monthly fee, or we can ask directly, I don't know, 1% from Malaysian government if they want the reports. What, it, what I believe it is, I believe that, uh, I believe that countries start to compete eventually, or make some collusions of friendships. And I believe that, like in private sector, if you have the best service like Facebook, best service in social media, you get all one billion Facebook users, best service in video calling, what do you use, Skype. If you have something for best and people use you, if we have best war, freelancers who want to do entrepreneurship on the internet for e-shops, we can get one billion users eventually. And this can be so huge that we don't need to discuss in daily life in Estonia how to increase, I don't know, from 1% GDP increase to 5%. We can, we can make thousand times richer. We can be a thousand. It, it can go, go so crazy, you know. If it's startup, it can scale. And if we automate everything, then it can go crazy. And uh, there are, of course, more risks, like in every startup, that we fail. But perhaps this is one thing we should try. <laughs> Two more. Uh, open IE EID platform is one opportunity. If you're a developer or a startup, you can actually uh, use somehow the technology behind this story. For example, Stripe, which I mentioned before, Stripe today needs to go to Asia and to know your customer for every person who wants to use its service and integrate with that bank. Now he says to everybody that let's make yourself e resident and I'll trust you, know your customer is done, face to face is done, and I can, you can start using our services. They can scale rapidly everywhere. So if companies discard that they can use e resident for their own benefit, it starts scaling. Other example is I brought e trainings. This is the first time in the world where actually government is saying that you have a name on the internet, like we Estonians have already. That uh, you can be someone on the internet that others need to trust you and accept you. And that's why there is one company now, which normally is doing physical trainings for certificates. Now they made an online platform and saying to everybody that once you are e-resident, you can start using our e-trainings. And uh, we, we accept you because it's government issued and you could get digitally designed uh, certificates. That means that basically they can scale again all around the world. Everybody who wants to do their e-trainings can become e-residents and do them and it's valid. So fourth section of use cases are related to using that technology, enhancing it using for your own sake. Fine. And last section. <laughs> It's the most difficult one. It's community of digital citizens. Let's call it like this. There are people like world citizens, people who move around the world. They are usually innovators, they are fans, they shine. They like new things. They don't see so committed to be on one borders, on one country. It's restrictions. The restrictions are bad. And the bureaucracy and limitations and all that, the big brother is telling me what to do. They are new world citizens and they want EU residents because they want to be in some group, in some community. They want to belong to something greater. No one knows what this greater actually is today, but this is some community where we can speak to each other. Where we can actually be like first e democracy, which don't spy on us and which give us the freedom to do wherever we live. We can have that picture later again. And uh, here are the real people from these groups. Three of them are here today, one of through video. And uh, I think I'll introduce a few words for each of them in 10 minutes time, once we start doing this. Thank you.